My name is Jürgen Warborn. I'm a uh, member of the European Parliament for the Swedish Moderate Party and uh, the group of the European People's Party, the EPP. Among other things, I work in the Committee for International Trade. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about intellectual property rights and those, as you know, uh, are given to persons uh, of, the, of the creations of their minds. This is very important for the economy, and you probably know this, but I will uh, s say a few things about the different uh, IP rights. First, we have copyright and copyright copyrighted related ones, which are usually creative, like the rights of authors of books and artistic works. They are time-bound to be a minimum of 50 years after the death of the creators. There is a difference between the author's moral rights and the economic rights. The moral right means that the author has the right to be credited when uh, his or her work is presented or used. The economic right is the author's exclusive right to dispose of the work by presenting or making it available to the public, like presenting a movie or a play. Secondly, there is IP rights of industrial property. This could be the protection of distinctive signs such as trademark and geographical indications like uh, Parma, for example. This aims to stimulate fair competition and protect consumers. Those are not time bound. Other types of industrial property that are protected most to stimulate innovation and design and the creation of technology. In this category, we have inventions which are protected by patents, industrial design and trade secrets. The purpose of IP of, uh, of industrial property is to provide protection for the results of investments in the development of new technology, giving the incentive and means to finance research and development. Successful intellectual property rules should also make the transfer of technology in the form of foreign direct investment, joint ventures and licensing easier. The protection is usually given for a spe specific time period, typically 20 years in the case of patents. But why are these IP rights so important? Well, intellectual property rights create an economic value. IP and patent rights are preconditions for innovation, which is necessary for successful companies that provide prosperity in our societies. Innovation and risk-taking should always pay off, otherwise no one would dare to do it. It's also important in order to build an entrepreneurial culture where inventors are rewarded for their ideas. I therefore believe it in strong copyright protections. Ideas and creations should not automatically become common property. And we should also strengthen patent and trademark protections. Meanwhile, protection of geographical indications take up a disproportionately big part of the EU's current efforts to protect IP rights. Naturally, there needs to be a balance so that innovation and risk-taking is rewarded, but there can be healthy competition that makes products even better and cheaper for consumers. During the COVID crisis, we have heard voices here in the European Parliament and around the world that want to weaken the World Trade Organization's IP rights of certain important products, such as vaccines. This is wrong because patents are the very reason that companies invest time and money into developing vaccines. And we need the pharmaceutical companies to want to develop them. For pharmaceuticals, IP rights are designed to encourage research and innovation, to incentivize pharmaceutical companies to come up with the new life-saving medicines, as their patents will be insured for a certain period. This period should be long enough to ensure the investment is worth it. Meanwhile, 
allowing the patent to be lifted in due time for, for other companies to make copies of the medicine, which will result, result in competition, higher quality and lower prices for patients. We need to make sure that vaccines that are developed can be manufactured and distributed in large quantities all over the world, for example, through the COVAX Corporation. Right now, companies are already cooperating with each other on a massive scale to overcome technical and engineering challenges to scale up manufacturing of cutting edge vac vaccines. Unfortunately, there is a false narrative emerging that intellectual property is a barrier to such collaboration and that weakening IP rights would lead to a quick increase in vaccine supply. Instead of questioning IP rights, countries and manufacturers should be working together to strengthen healthcare systems, streamline regulatory approvals and address supply chain bottlenecks in order to speed, speed uh, vaccine distribution globally. Losing IP rights in the EU now, that would erode them forever. Protecting IP rights is necessary to develop medicines, not only for the COVID, but for the future as well. The EU should be proud of its strong competition rules. They have served us well thus far. IP rights are a preconditions for international trades. Among other, among other things, it can help to build trust and fight counterfeiting. An erosion of intellectual IP rights could therefore give reasons for countries to close up and act protectionists. Incorporating IP into international trade has enabled us to exchange consumer goods on a global scale, lift millions of people out of poverty and facilitate innovation across the globe. Ensuring that this trend continues in the post-COVID area is a key issue. Free, diverse trade needs to go hand in hand with strong IP and patent rights. They are equally important for all the parts of the world and everyone profits. IP rights are also paramount for us to bounce back and build a more competitive Europe for the future. For IP rights, there is a balance to be struck and answers are not always clear cut when it comes to different policy objectives. But any liberal pro-trade agenda must include strong IP rights. I hope this overview can serve as some food for thought as part of the free market roadshow. Thank you very much.